Hi, Sarah here from smallbusinesssarah.com. And today I'm going to show you how to tie out your Amazon 1099 to your profit and loss report that you generate from QuickBooks Online. So I am recommending using a QuickBooks Online product for your Amazon bookkeeping. Links below in the description. And if you've been following my Amazon method throughout the year using the Amazon monthly summaries, also link to that video up there, then at the end of the year, you're going to need to compare the information that you've input into QuickBooks via the journal entries. Those journal entries populate onto your profit and loss report. That's a report that you would give your tax preparer along with your balance sheet at the end of the year so that they could do their your taxes but before you do that you want to tie out the 1099 that amazon sent you to your profit and loss so that you know that what you're giving your tax preparer is correct and accurate if you have been using the amazon monthly summary method that i recommend then you're going to be in good shape when you first look at the 1099 it's going to look like you don't tie out and i'm going to explain to you in this video why that is and i will show you how the monthly summary method, the profit and loss that you have at the end of the year, how that does in fact exactly tie out to your Amazon 1099 at the end of the year. All right, if these videos have been helpful to you at all, I would really appreciate your like and your subscribe. So let's dig into those reports and the Amazon 1099. When you first receive your Amazon 1099K and you look at that grand total figure that Amazon is saying that you received, and then you go and you look at your profit and loss report, and you see that the two numbers do not agree at all, you may at first freak out and think that using the Amazon monthly summaries method, Amazon holding method that I recommended in my previous video, which link up above and down below, you're probably thinking I steered you wrong and that I've totally messed up and my method doesn't work. In fact, it does. Let me show you how. Amazon provides a handy dandy page two of the 1099. Here is the grand total figure that they gave up above. See that? 31,968. But then they show how they arrived at that figure. If only every single company would do something like this, that would be amazing. It would be so helpful. So there are different components that go into their figure. We're going to go through them. The most important thing then when you are doing your monthly entries is to make sure each one of these has its own separate line in the journal entry. So in the journal entry we do, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you gotta watch that other video. It's okay that we combine the FBA and non-FBA sales. Those are what gets included here. But we do break out refunds and that's a key part. I believe in my original video, I totaled shipping credits and shipping credit refunds together. I no longer do that. Now I have a separate account for the shipping credit refunds and I record those separately. So if you haven't been doing that, you may need to go back and do that. Gift wrap, I now record separately. I don't lump it in with other income items. And same with promotional rebates. In the past, I had been lumping together promotional rebates with promotional rebate refunds. Now I no longer do that. I keep those separate. So let's see how these items now tie out to our profit and loss. So here we have them side by side and you can see the 29,240. That's what we have here. And this is just simply the monthly summary journal entry. I didn't do anything else to these figures at all. I just did my monthly journal entries from the Amazon monthly summaries. That's it. And that agrees. Shipping credit, $430.88. If there was a shipping credit refund, that would now have a separate line and it would be a negative amount. 
gift wrap is now completely separate. It's not lumped together with other credits. And finally, promotional rebates. Once again, if there are promotional rebate refunds, that would have a separate line and that would be positive. You'll notice that promotional rebates over here are minus promotional rebates. And therefore, if you get a promotional rebate refund, it would appear as a positive here. So the opposite direction in your journal entry. So as long as when you're doing your journal entry, you're breaking out these items right here, you're going to be in good shape. So let's move on to sales tax collected. So most states require Amazon to collect and remit sales tax for each and every sale made to their state, most states. Amazon most likely has not remitted any sales tax to you throughout the year. So this amount here, you never received that amount. That amount, sales tax, is never income to you. If you had received sales tax, it would have appeared on your balance sheet as a positive amount on your balance sheet. And then when you paid your sales tax, that would have been reduced. Sales tax is often included in 1099 figures, but it needs to be adjusted for on your taxes because you did not actually receive that amount as income. So this is what I was talking about earlier. You need to understand your tie out so then you can give this information to your tax preparer and the tax preparer will know how to adjust your Schedule C so that you are not paying tax on this $1,900 that gets adjusted out. You still have to agree to the 1099 when you file your taxes, but you can make an adjustment for then the sales tax collected that you don't really need to pay tax on. And then finally, this column here, which I believe is new this year, if I'm not mistaken, that's actually for people who use Amazon Pay on a different platform. So in this case, Amazon Pay was activated on the Shopify platform, and those amounts agree to those amounts collected on a different platform altogether. So we have this amount, these amounts never appeared on the Amazon regular monthly summary for sellers that are selling, you know, products directly on Amazon. Instead, like I said, that is if you have Amazon Pay activated on whatever platform where you are accepting payments through Amazon Pay. So that's how the tie-out works. You have to use page two or you will never agree to the Amazon 1099. If you have slight differences, here's what I'd suggest. I have seen Amazon make changes to monthly summaries after the fact. So you may want to go like re-download monthly summaries and change your journal entries if Amazon has made changes to the monthly summaries after you've already done those journal entries. That's the first thing I'd look into. However, if the difference is small, if we're talking like a couple of dollars or depending on your sales volume, a couple of hundred dollars, if the difference is small, then I would just post a journal entry to agree to the 1099. I wouldn't go hunting for it necessarily if the difference is small. I hope this has been helpful for you. I get a lot of questions about tying out to the Amazon 1099. As always, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day.